Instacart shoppers know groceries. They know that you can't make guacamole with rock-hard avocados. They know how to quickly find those peanut butter pretzels you can never find. And they keep you in the know by giving you updates about your order along the way. Let Instacart shoppers help take shopping off your plate so you can get time and energy back for what really matters. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Instacart. Add life to cart. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, We've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Christensen. Always want to remind you guys, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Go ahead and subscribe to our email list and I will get you a 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. So definitely go check that out absolutely for free simply for uh, signing up for our email list and and when we uh, have new podcasts and and products and things of that nature. So uh, definitely go check that out and let's get into the drug of the day. And we are talking uh, cholestopol. Brand name of this medication is Colested, and this medication is classified as a drug that can uh, lower cholesterol levels. Uh, More specifically, its classification is a bile acid sequestrant. Now, I have talked about cholestyramine, I believe, in a previous podcast, and that mechanism is similar. So, cholestopol binds bile acid in the gut. And if you remember, uh, cholesterol, more specifically LDL, and bile acid can essentially bind up each other or are bound together uh, in the gut. So when cholesterol binds up bile acid, it also can take with it cholesterol and LDL and things of that nature. And that's ultimately uh, eliminated through the feces and then uh, reabsorption isn't possible uh, back into systemic circulation. So that's the, the main uh, mechanism by which it lowers Uh, cholesterol there. Now, in clinical practice, do I see this medication used for cholesterol? Uh, Not very often. Uh, We've got so much better evidence, data, uh, with statin therapy uh, effectiveness as well. Um, So in in most situations, you're probably going to see a statin first. Uh, you're probably going to see ezetimibe and, you know, or maybe our higher risk patients, uh, secondary prevention, things like that. Um, and then maybe uh, down the line as a, a further option, you you might see cholestopol. But um, I can tell you, it, it doesn't get utilized very often um, for its cholesterol purposes. Uh, in geriatrics, in my patient population, uh, I would say I probably see cholestopol used more often uh, off-label uh, for management and symptoms of chronic diarrhea where uh, we can't figure out um, any identifiable uh, treatable cause. So I've definitely seen it used off-label uh, for that purpose periodically, which uh, kind of can tell you a little bit about the potential adverse effect profile uh, in its ability to cause Uh, constipation if we're potentially using it off-label to manage uh, diarrhea there. Uh, Other adverse effects, uh, GI upset, cramping, uh, GI symptoms are basically going to be the major uh, concerns, uh, major common uh, patient complaints. Uh, Rarely there's been associations with acidosis, uh, elevations in LFTs, Uh, Also, potentially, uh, myopathy as well. Uh, Maybe more so likely in a patient who's um, taking this medication in combination uh, with a statin. Uh, It is important to recognize that uh, cholesterol is not meant uh, to bring down triglycerides. And in fact, uh, there's some evidence that, that says we should not use 
this medication if a patient has uh, triglycerides greater than 300, and that's from ACCAHA statement. I think it was a couple of years ago now. Um, so with that, cholestopol can actually increase triglycerides, which is definitely something we uh, don't want to do, especially in a patient that may be um, towards the uh, higher end already. So important to remember that that fact about it. Um, dietary uh, considerations uh, before we get into the drug interaction specifically um, definitely needs to be mentioned. If you've got a patient at risk, um, you know, for poor nutrition, maybe they don't eat right, maybe, uh, you know, they're, they've got a history of alcoholism, something along those lines, um, this drug can reduce absorption of certain fat uh, fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, uh, and vitamin K. So uh, important to remember that uh, folic acid is also another one. Uh, so keep that in mind. In a patient that's eating well overall, you know, otherwise normal, other than maybe uh, elevated cholesterol or, or diarrhea, you know, they're they're probably going to be okay. Um, but if we're using this medication over a long period of time and maybe they've got some other risk factors for poor nutrition, uh, that may be a patient a little more at risk uh, for some of those uh, vitamin deficiencies. Lab monitoring routinely, we're probably not going to do uh, too much there um, other than lipids if we're using it for cholesterol purposes. Uh, in the event we're using it to, to manage diarrhea, you, you may check some labs based upon the symptoms of, of diarrhea, but for the drug itself, uh, you might not uh, do much routine monitoring there. All right, so let's take a quick break, and we will come back with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study materials, definitely go check out our growing list of resources at meded101.com store. We've also got Audible book promotions where if you've never used an Audible book, never tried an Audible book, uh, they will give you your first one for free. So uh, definitely uh, click on the audiobooks links at meded101.com slash store and uh, you can get your first one for free, whether that's our, our um, a book on common drug interactions, uh, pharmacotherapy, case studies, or The Thrill of the Case, another basically uh, add-on um, secondary book to uh, pharmacotherapy with lots of similar uh, clinical pearls, education, uh, great stuff for you know new practitioners, physicians, nurse practitioners, just to learn about medication management and the thought process um, of managing, changing, altering medications. So um, definitely go check out those resources. Uh, lots of different stuff for all uh, different folks at meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, so let's finish up on drug interactions and um, cholestopol. It's uh, simple but complicated, okay? So simple in the aspect of there are a lot of, um, excuse me, complex in the aspect of there are a lot of dr potential drug interactions, um, but simple in the fact that they're all basically through the same pathway. So binding interactions are very common with cholesterol, um, but there's a lot of them. So, you know, digoxin, amiodarone, uh, I mentioned, you know, the risk of uh, reducing vitamin absorption. Uh, corticosteroids or some diuretic interactions where concentrations can be reduced, uh, thyroid medications, of course, uh, and that's not the, the total extensive list. But just to give you an idea, if you ever see this medication used, you've got to recognize that there's probably going to be a potential for binding drug interactions and go through that patient's medication list, uh, make sure they aren't on any you know, drugs with a narrow therapeutic index, and also keep in mind um, that we may have a clinical non-response if we knock those concentrations down of a particular drug um, by cholesterol binding them up. So uh, keep tabs on that. Uh, definitely a lot of binding drug interactions. In most situations, I would say we can get away with timing the drug appropriately. So what you would generally do is time 
uh, other medications before uh, cholestopol. So maybe an hour or two before you take the cholestopol, you take all your other medications. That way it gives the body uh, some time to absorb those drugs and make sure that patients are getting uh, their adequate and consistent dose. Uh, if you're doing it after, generally we have to wait a lot longer because that cholesterol is going to be in the gut, it's going to be hanging around, and uh, generally that time frame is four to six hours um, after the dose of cholesterol to, again, give those other medications to try to avoid or minimize the potential uh, for those binding interactions. So can be a little bit uh, tricky there to avoid those interactions. Uh, kind of another reason why this medication isn't used terribly often um, because of, of those purposes. And then from um, an additive adverse effect profile, I definitely think that uh, when I see cholesterol, it's one of those medications that can contribute to constipation. So uh, if you do happen to be using it for cholesterol management, and you see a patient's on opioids, anticholinergics, uh, maybe even something like calcium channel blocker, definitely could have an additive effect towards constipation. So something we need to uh, educate our patients about, including you know educating about fiber and fluid intake and things of that nature. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast. Uh, definitely leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Um, greatly appreciated. Uh, share us with a friend on Instagram or Facebook, uh, Twitter, whatever social media platform you utilize. Uh, that's also greatly appreciated. Uh, if you've got an email list of, of classmates that you think um, in your pharmacology class, for example, that you think could benefit uh, from the podcast, uh, definitely don't hesitate to share uh, our free resource uh, with those folks as well. Again, you can sign up, uh, get that 31-page PDF, good little study guide on the top 200 drugs at reallifepharmacology.com. And definitely um, go support our sponsor, meded101.com slash store. You can track me down on meded101.com or LinkedIn are probably the two best ways to do that. Um, definitely don't hesitate to um, let me know any suggestions, questions, concerns. I, I do my best to answer all of them. I do get quite a few, um, but definitely suggestions I uh, look at on an individual basis and obviously try to um, make this podcast better and, and more applicable uh, to what you're doing as a healthcare professional. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you guys take care and have a great rest of your day. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.